Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 298. Page 298 and today is our lesson number 243. Page 293. We are going to do problem number 14B. Just today we dealt with 14A and I'm going to give you a quick recapitulation of what went what what transpired yesterday I'm going to give you a quick uh, recapitulation of what transpired yesterday yesterday we dealt with problem 14a in problem 14a we were talking about a situation where the two events we are told are mutually exclusive event a and b we were told were mutually exclusive Two events are said to be mutually exclusive where the occurrence of one precludes the other from happening. So yesterday the example that I gave you, listen very carefully because I don't want you to get confused. Yesterday the examples that we're talking about, we talked about three different examples yesterday. In all of those three examples, it was just the one thing that we did here. For example, uh, we put the, num uh, num the names of boys and girls in the school in a box and we picked one, one person at random. Just one person at random and the question was what are the, what are the odds? that the person that we picked was both boy and a girl and the answer of course was a big fat zero because occurrence of one event precludes the other from happening such an event such, such events are called mutually exclusive then we put the number of then we put the names of teachers in the box and we mix it all up and we pick one person at random and the question was what are the odds that if I pick the name of one person from this box here of, of the people in this building in the elementary school what are the odds that the person that I picked is both a student and a teacher and the answer was zero because if you tell me that the person that you picked at random is a teacher then I automatically know that that person is not a student because the occurrence of one precludes the other from happening but it is only one thing that we're doing here in this example we're going to do two, two things for example yesterday we just rolled one dice that's it we rolled it once and, and we rolled the dice just once and the question was on that one roll what are the odds that the number that I get is going to be both even and odd? Well, it cannot be both even and odd. If you tell me that the, you roll the dice and the number that you see there is even, then I already, already know that the odds that the, the, the odds of an odd number happening on the same roll on the same roll is zero. And do, those two events are called mutually exclusive. But it was one roll. Here, in this example, we're going to roll the dice twice. We're going to do two. We're going to whatever that we're doing here. We're going to do it two different times. For example. Well, since we are talking about the dice here, for example, we could just as well ask here, what are the odds that when I roll a dice, I get, I get the 3 on the first roll, probability that I get 3 on the first roll, and I get 3 on the second roll. Well, Getting a 3 on the first roll does not preclude, does not uh, uh, make the possibility of getting a 3 on the second roll impossible. It does not. Why? Because the dice has no memory. Just because I got the 3 on the first roll has absolutely no bearing of what number is going to appear on the second roll. They do not affect each other. They have no influence on each other. Such events are called independent. The two events are said to be independent if the odds of one event happening has absolutely nothing to do with the odds of the other happening. So here, what are the odds that you get a 3 on the first roll? Well, it's just 1 out of 6. It's just 1 out of 6. So this is going to be the same as the, the R, the probability, P stands for probability. Probability that I get 3 on the first roll and the probability that I get 3 on the second roll is, is equal to the probability that I get the 3 on the first roll times the probability that I get the 3 on the second roll. 
and the probability that I get the 3 on the first roll is 1 6th, the probability that I get 3 on the second roll is 1 6th also. So the chances are 1 out of 36 that I'm going to get 3 on the first roll and 3 on the second roll. Or for that matter, anything at all. For example, if somebody asks you what are the odds that you're going to get a 3 on the first roll and 5 on the second roll, well, it still is 1 out of 36 because getting a 5 on the second roll, their odds is 1, one out of 6. Any number that you talk about, the, the odds of getting one particular number on a given row is 1 out of 6. The odds of getting one particular number on the first roll is also 1 out of 6. Therefore, the odds that this particular number will appear on the first roll and the odds and the odds that the, this particular other some other particular number will appear in the second roll is the product of the two things. And it's 1 6 times 1 6. But it is not zero. It's 1 6 times 1 6. That's the whole point. Had these two events been mutually exclusive, then it would have meant exactly what it says. Mutually exclusive means one excludes the other. Here, 3 appearing on the first roll does not exclude, does not make it impossible to get the 3 on the second roll. Such events are called independent. Here we're talking about independent events. This was the fundamental equation that we talked about yesterday. This is called, this equation is typically referred to as inclusive exclusive principle in the statistics book, inclusive exclusive principle. And you must know this by heart. This is the most fundamental equation. And then you have to decide what, does, what happens here. This part has to do with whether the events are mutually exclusive or whether they are independent. If they are mutually exclusive, if they are mutually exclusive, then as I said already many times, mutually exclusive means exactly what it says. One excludes the other. So the odds that A will happen and B will happen is absolutely zero. Do you understand? On a given roll, just one roll, on a given roll, what are the odds that I'm going to get an even number and odd number? The answer is zero. If I were to pick one person at random from the box, what are the odds that the person that I picked is going to be both teacher and student? What are the odds that he's going to be teacher and a student? The answer is zero. Because everybody in the school is, uh, in, 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 the, in the box, the names, the box that contains name, either they are students or teacher. There is no person who is a teacher and a student. Do you understand? In our example. So let's do this example here. That's it. We're dealing with two independent events here. And as long as you understand that, and in, in the case of two independent events, all we have to do is multiply their probability. All we have to do is multiply the probability of one event with the probability of the other event. So let's do this problem here. In here, well, let's, first of all, let's change this to C and D because in problem number B, they use letter C and letter D to represent the events. Let's change that. Of course, name has no significance, but that's what they're calling it. C, the, uh, the odds of C or D or both is same as the odds of C plus the odds of D and the odds of C and D. We are told that the odds of C or D is 0.6. We are told that the odds of C is 0.5. The odds of D is what we are looking for. They are asking for what are the odds of event D minus the odds of C and D. Well, the odds of D is the unknown minus the odds of C and D, which is same as the odds of C and D is same as the odds of C times D, because they are two independent events. So this is probability of C times the probability of D. But well, we know probability of C. Probability of C is 0.5. So this is just 0.5 times the probability of D minus 0.5 times probability of D. Let's subtract 0.5 from both sides. So if you bring 0.5 to this side, you will end up with probability of D minus the 0.5 of probability of D equals 0.1. And of course, this is just 1 times this amount. 1 minus a half is just half. So, point, so that ends up with 0.5 probability of D equals 0.1. Divide both sides by Divide both sides by 0.5, and you end up here. We end up here as probability of D is equal to 0.5, or rather 0.1 over 0.5. 0 0.1 over 0.5, if you multiply top and bottom by 10, we end up with 0 
0.5 over 0.1 over 0.5. If you multiply top and bottom by 10, we end up with 1 over 5, which of course is same as 0.2. And that's our answer. The probability of an event day is 20%. And that's it. But it's, all of this comes from this equation right here. This is, as I said, the most fundamental equation. You must know this equation by heart. And you must understand the concept of two events being mutually exclusive and the concept of two events being independent. It's very simple to remember, very simple to remember. Two events are said to be independent precisely because that's what they are called. They are independent. Independent means the odds of one event happening has absolutely nothing to do with the odds of the other happening. They are completely independent. They have nothing to do with each other. Just because you roll a five in the first dice has absolutely nothing to do with what are the odds of getting a four in the second dice, the second roll. Absolutely nothing to do with each other. On the other hand, two events are called mutually exclusive if you're told that some, some event took place and by virtue of that event happening, it makes it impossible for the other event to take place. Do you understand? That's it. I'm done. I will see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.